the use of technology and artificial intelligence. And so I'm excited because it means that we can focus on providing strategic support, strategic direction to a business as opposed to just grunt work form filling. So I think technology is a very big opportunity. So joining me on the line today, I've got Michael Youssef from HY Accounting. Welcome to the call, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Maybe tell us a bit about um, HY Accounting, what you guys do. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. So my name is Michael Youssef, CEO of HY Accounting. Um, I'm fortunate enough that each day I get to help our clients solve three main problems. So the first is, how do I protect my business and my financial affairs? Um, how do I optimize my tax situation? And finally, how do I build a successful business that leaves a positive legacy for my family and my community? So we, we solve the problems through our expert advice and our care and attention to detail. And that knowledge that you, know, you, you accrue over 20 years of being in this field. Um, and we do it because we want to empower our clients to achieve, uh, because it's all about helping our clients to build better, more successful businesses that provide them with more time and more money and ultimately more freedom. Yeah. Because debits, credits and tax from my perspective is really just the beginning of what we can do and how we can help. Yeah, gotcha. And so often we find, you know, tax optimization strategies as well as business optimization strategies. And we're really thinking about your business in more than just one realm effectively. So tell me a bit about how you're navigating the current economy. Um, thinking differently. So I suppose there's a great kind of saying, do what your competitors aren't doing. So, you know, we were really proactive on social media during this COVID campaign. We ran, started our own um, COVID kind of awareness group, stimulus awareness group on Facebook. And we were just delivering a bunch of information to, you know, let business owners know what's available in terms of any stimulus measures, you know, regular recordings and just making all the information available for everyone and just being there to support people. Yeah. Um, but as well, we were just looking at, this is a, this is, this situation has highlighted a lot of, I believe gaps in our profession. Right. And so it's been, it's been good to kind of better understand, you know, what's the pain or what's the challenges that business owners are facing when it comes mm. to engaging with their accountant at the moment. Okay. Fantastic. So what sort of gaps are you seeing? I think it's just, there's not enough love. You know, there's a lot of, there's not enough love there. It's sometimes, you know, getting, how can business owners make good business decisions when they get a response two weeks later? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's often, you, it's the, the hype is gone after that point. And so it's hard to kind of get, make good business decisions or how can you, if you're not proactively working with your account and thinking of them as part of your team, yeah. how do you navigate the past, the, the current climate and the future? Yeah. So it's, it's changing the perception that, and working with clients and the business community to change the perception that your account is not just the person you go to to fill a tax form. You know, yeah, right. they're a good they're a good resource to have within your business. Understand, understand. So tell me about the opportunities you see in the marketplace right now. I think our space is still heavily influenced by technology, and I'm a yeah. big advocate for it. I, I personally believe that most of the accounting industry could be made redundant <laughs> with the use of technology and artificial intelligence, and so I'm excited because. It means that we can focus on providing strategic support, strategic direction to a business as opposed to just grunt work form filling. So I think technology is a very big opportunity. Um, and we saw that a lot of firms who weren't placed from that perspective, they struggled when this pandemic hit. Yeah. Uh, whereas the firms that were that did have the technology in place, they were just able to, to leverage and grow. Um, I also see that in in every industry i think it's there's more of it's more of a level playing field now like i've been saying to clients that a lot of big businesses were cut down to cut down a lot of small businesses yes you know they either don't exist or they're they're now able to compete with the bigger bigger businesses so i feel like you know there's now a more level playing field so there's now more opportunity available for those business owners who are really passionate determined willing to put in that effort and mm -hmm. just think differently about how they do what they do yeah um, so yeah yeah so what are your priorities in business right now? Uh, build out more marketing automation. Yeah. So less that requires less input from myself. Mm -hmm. um, looking at building a couple other lead generation sources. So that way it's more consistent kind of leads coming into the business and something that's scalable. And then 
looking at building more, creating more content and more information and providing more resources to people who, you know, just want help, want to ask a question. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, really good. So let me ask you on a personal note, uh, Michael, what have you learned out of this? What have you taken personally from it? <sighs> there are two things that I believe massively impact your results. The first is your mindset and the second are the people you surround yourselves with. Right. Um, I love the saying, your network is your net worth. And mm -hmm. if you want to be the best, go and play with people who are at level five levels above you. So I'm really big fan of that. Um, and then as well as, you, you know, all the chaos that surround us, if I am chaotic, it's a reflection of my internal state. So if, if I'm internally chaotic, then I will see chaos. Whereas if I am internally peaceful, then I will see peace. And so, you know, one thing I noticed a lot of was I was, you know, I was giving a lot of calls, quick five, five minute motivational pitches, you know, during the pandemic because people were coming to me crying, you know, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah. But, um, you know, being able to just go, all right, well, I can't control what's happening around me, but I can control my mindset and I can control the people that I surround myself with during this. And so those things have had a big impact on me. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And let me ask you, you've been in business for a while. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever received? So I've got two. Can I share two? Of course you can. Okay. So the first one was one of my mentors. He said to me, um, the smartest thing you can do is being the dumbest person in your team. Nice. And so I really like that. Um, yeah. And that's something that, you know, it's, it's something that I take into work. It's not that I don't know what I'm doing. Of course I do. But it's more letting go of control and allowing others in your organization to take on more control. Yeah. Um, so that's and so that allows me to then focus on the next piece of advice, which is a business will never outperform the psychology and skill level of the leader. So my business will always be capped to my own potential. But if I constantly work on my mindset, constantly work on my skills, then, you know, my business will, will continue to grow. The most competing piece of advice in a way, isn't it? One saying, don't be the smartest person in the room. The other <laughs> one saying, don't stop growing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they, I like, I don't know, they both kind of find that they complement one another. They do. They do. Because really what it's saying is you don't need to be technically brilliant. You just need to be a leader. That's it. And leadership is actually hard. Because That's it requires it. you to take risks. It requires you to find new markets. It requires you to make decisions. 100%. Where being technically brilliant is employment it's like that's the employee's first role in the in the business right correct yeah. that's why i say to clients like it's easier to like you can find technicians and managers everywhere yeah they advertise those roles all day every day but you don't often find roles advertised for leaders yes um, because yeah. those tra they're so rare you know th that trade is is a lot more is a lot rarer than a technician or a manager's role very much so so tell me, do you have a favorite book that you've read like recently or in the past? Uh, look, the one that I quote a lot um, is The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Yeah. That's yeah, one classic. I've been, yeah, it's a good, it's a good book. And mm. I think, yeah, and on the, on the two pieces of advice and what we were just talking about, I find it's very much related. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my, um, that's probably my go to, that's probably my favorite at the moment. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. And look, one last question for you, Michael. What's the number one piece of advice you're giving to business owners right now? Yeah. First thing that comes to my mind is it's possible to work smart and hard. So it's, you know, they say work smarter, not harder, but I like to think, well, why can't you just do both? Why can't you work smart and in the areas that you need to work and then in those areas work hard as well? So, you know, find ways to do things better and then, focus on the activities that are going to produce the most outcomes and work hard at those. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's brilliant. So I think now's not the time to wait. You know, a lot of, a lot of the world is waiting for a cure, waiting for this, waiting for that. And the smart people are running harder than ever. They're saying this is the time to make ground. So I think you're right. Working smart and hard at the right time. Right. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when the sun shines, you make hay. And I think for business right now, there's an opportunity to get massive amount of market share because everyone else has taken their foot off the accelerator. 100% completely agree. Awesome. Michael, it's been great talking to you today. Some really yeah, good insights. Time. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. It's been really great. Thank Pleasure. you. Cheers.